Android smartphone camera megapixel race is becoming overkill. We've recently moved from 12, 13, or uh, 60 megapixel main camera to 48, uh, 64, and 108 megapixels main camera. And <laughs> leaks are already showing that uh, Android flagships of 2022 <laughs> are going to be coming out, some of them with a whopping 200 megapixel main camera. Wait, what? 200 megapixel main camera? Was that really necessary? Not at all. More megapixels count doesn't necessarily translate to better pictures. Special thanks to Gcampod developer Yroxen for his efforts. I will use his full 64MP Gcam enabler to showcase where megapixel really counts. If you're ready, let's go. Okay, welcome back. Before we go into that critical situation where megapixel is very important, do more megapixel mean better pictures? Honestly, the answer is not a straight yes or no. While Samsung is pushing more megapixels, Google and Apple think otherwise. The iPhone 12 Pro maintained its 12 megapixel while adding more camera sensors. It competed nicely with Samsung's 108 megapixel camera and did better in night mode and portrait shots. Mr. Who's the Boss made this comparison. He's one of the best in the business, so it's very accurate. But how can 12 megapixel compete with 108 megapixel? Since the iPhone 6s in 2015, Apple has maintained its 12 megapixel primary camera. But they double down on other factors that help improve picture quality and improve those factors from one generation to the next. Processing power, micro metapixel, sensor size, lens, aperture, and f-stops. Well, it requires only an 8.3 megapixel camera sensor to shoot 4K video. 12 megapixels camera sensor will still be relevant until every video is shot in 8K and above. When it comes to smartphones with higher megapixels camera, you will be surprised to know that the images are stored in 12 or 16 megapixels by default. The large megapixel sensors use binding technology to reduce the image sizes drastically. So, why use higher megapixel when most times they will be underutilized? If you're shooting on auto mode, your 48 megapixel will store images as 12 megapixel, 64 megapixel will store it as 60 megapixel, and even the whooping 108 megapixel will still store images as 12 megapixel. Now we're going to utilize the full power of a 64 megapixel camera and see how large the image is it can produce. With the 64 MP enabler already installed in this phone, the Wiroxin Gcam will show if the phone is in beamed mode. And then if you click on that, you see a little button that will show you when the camera is full. You click on it to switch. Now it's gone back to beamed. Beamed is actually the default or auto. But now we're going to go into the setting and then we're going to turn on some uh, draw stroke JPEG because we're going to do this uh, on both raw and JPEG. So let's start with the JPEG now. We're going to shoot now on pinned and we're going to switch to full megapixel 64 MP mode. As you can see right now, the uh, display the preview is really really shaking because it takes a lot of processing power to utilize the full power of the camera so if you scroll up right now so this is the 64 MP mode on JPEG is 15 MP and actually that is compressed so let's move again now to the beamed one which is the auto and then it is 16 megapixel 16.1 and it is JPEG and it's also compressed that's 4.4 MB so let's zoom into this one now. You can see how far we can go on the 60 megapixel. And then let's go back again and then check the one of the 64 megapixel. 
so now the difference right now is that as you can see we can get more details more than the 16 megapixel and this is where megapixels becomes very important but we can even do more when we go in and check out the raw mode so let's go to the setting and then we're going to go to where the raw file is and we're going to uh, go in and then view the raw folder so this is the raw folder right now so we're going to do the so it's two one is binned one is uh, full mp uh, 64 mp so wow this is 62 megabytes <laughs> for that 64 mp image now that is unbelievable you can do a lot i mean you can put this on the billboard uh, so that's the other one also is on bind and auto mode it's about 15 mp and then it's 60 megapixel image so now let's check the difference between the two so with the 15 MB raw, which is on auto, you see how much we can zoom, but this is the 64 MP uh, on raw. And then it went even way, way more. We can get much, 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 much detail from. So now you see that all these things are actually software processing. Now, thanks to GCAM and thanks to developer Yroxin for bringing this. Now we can enjoy the full power of a 64 MP camera on the Realme X2. From what we have seen so far, the 64 MP full enabler is a software work that was done by Yroxin. Special thanks to him for that. And then you can see that GCAM port that we use have this uh, raw uh, mode where you can actually get the raw data from the sensor without processing it to JPEG, which actually has some compression that carried out within it. So um, what do you think? <laughs> Let me hear from you in the comment section. Will you want to see Android OEM focus more on software processing, maybe processor power, having a dedicated uh, image processing uh, sub-processor, or where you want to see better quality sensors and all that so let me hear from you in the comment section and until i see you next time peace subscribe i'll see you